Before we get into today's show, I want to hear from you guys. If you are excited for the 2023 season with the Falcons having a very real shot of winning the NFC South this year, show it. Spam me in the comment section right now. Bonus points if you type it in multiple times. Welcome into Falcons Today. I am Tom Downey. Today's show, we're taking a look at three different free agents the Falcons could elect to sign with post-June 1st time frame over, some extra money coming to different teams. And I kind of inspired by this by what Matt Urban of Falcons Wire wrote. And this is a great point. The Atlanta Falcons haven't been shy about adding talent this offseason. Even after signing numerous big-name free agents, the team still has over $10 million remaining in salary cap space for 2023. There are a couple different routes Tennessee could go, or the Falcons could go, excuse me, getting ahead of myself with one player in particular. Spoiler alert, wide receiver, but we've talked about DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, plenty on this channel, so we'll get to them later. Edge rusher, which I think could even go defensive line, slight teaser there, and center as well. So let's begin with center, and that begins with Billy Price, who also offers some positional flexibility. He's bounced around and played some guard in his time in the NFL, and that might be an area of concern, especially if Atlanta does not have any faith in Jalen Mayfield, which, by the way, totally understand. <laughs> uh, Mayfield has not lived up to expectations at all since being an early round pick coming out of Michigan. Now, as it sits right now at center, I think Matt Hennessy offers some guard center flexibility too, but Drew Dahlman is slated to play center, but still adding that veteran to compete or at least be there in case of injury knock on wood, would be smart and could be beneficial, and there are some offense linemen who fit that mold. Dahlman, I like him. I don't think he's a superstar center. I thought he was going to be better last year, to be quite honest. I don't think he was bad. The Falcons' run-blocking offense is pretty darn good, and I think that bears out Dahlman's numbers in his PFF grades. I know it's PFF. Bear with me, but no one really puts... O-line stuff together that's available. Uh, better run blocker than he was pass blocker, which is the inverse of Billy Price from a sack allowed perspective. Price have, did, did play some guard. Centers don't allow very many sacks. I don't have any issues adding Billy Price for what I think he would cost. I think it would be a little to no guaranteed money deal. Billy Price is a former first round pick out of Ohio State by the Cincinnati Bengals and to be quite blunt, he's been bad in his NFL career. He has not been a starting caliber player but if he's your eighth-ish offensive lineman or fights for that role that's not that bad in the end. So when it comes to center in general, maybe you have complete faith in Dolman. Do you want the Falcons to add a potential center? Y for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off with the pin comment of today's show. If the ad break comes here on YouTube, cool. Take advantage of it. Head down there and go vote. I slipped up and said Tennessee because I was thinking about this guy, the top free agent of, of these three that we're discussing today. That's Ben Jones, who actually was pretty good last year for Tennessee. Now, there are some reasons why he might be available, but Ben Jones, I would say, is significantly better than Billy Price. And that's I'm not trying to be mean against Billy Price. That's praise for Ben Jones, who, of course, has a built-in relationship with Arthur Smith from their time together in Tennessee. That should certainly be mentioned. These numbers you see on screen here, the PFF grades, are pretty darn good for a center who's available in June. You compare it to what Billy Price did, the pressures allowed by Ben Jones are fewer than allowed by those from Billy Price on about 70 fewer snaps. So that's significant. That, that is a Ben Jones, pretty clearly on, on screen right here, better in every category except maybe for the medical, except maybe for the health. We'll get into that in just a moment. But first, I do want to hear from you guys. Any free agent, any position, who do you want the Falcons to go out and sign? Sound off for me in the comment section of today's video.
Looking only at the numbers from last year, it is a bit odd that Ben Jones is unsigned, that Tennessee cut him and going to play Aaron Brewer, seems like, at center. But Jones did battle injuries all season. And there's been some whispers of maybe he could com- contemplate retirement. Maybe he wants to get healthy. Maybe he just doesn't want to re-sign prior to OTAs and minicamp. And like so many vets do, he wants to take some time off in May and June and maybe even into July. And then because he is a veteran, he can still hit the ground running and not miss out on too much time. So if Jones wants to play, given the ties to Arthur Smith and just being a good football player, it is worth a call if you are the Atlanta Falcons. So pick one of these two to sign if you have to pick one. No no cop-out answers of none. you got to pick one here. BP for Billy Price, BJ, don't be weird, if for Ben Jones in the comments. Now, I promise you, if the Falcons make a signing, one of us here at Chat Sports will get the video out for you guys. Hit that sub button now for more free Falcons YouTube videos. Finally, let's go to the different side of the trenches. It's a trenches show today. Matthew Ionatis, who I've always liked, dating back to his time with the Commanders, and it never, ever hurts to add depth on the defensive line. And I think that his role is best in that five-technique role, that 3-4 defensive end. He's played some three-technique. They've given him some nose guard ups times. He's not, a, he's not the best fit there. He would be your Clayus Campbell type of backup. And I think you could back up Grady Jarrett some as well. I think the the Falcons have done a good job in recent years of throwing picks at that defensive line. Always a smart idea. Early on in his career, alongside Chase Young and Montez Sweat and Deron Payne, I thought he was one of the best, maybe one of the more underrated defensive linemen in the NFL. Eight and a half sacks, seven and a half sacks in 2019, 2018 respectively. That's awesome production. So you're going, okay, why is he available? Well, he hasn't been that good in the last three years. 32 games played, so just over 10 games per season. Only five sacks, only 10 TFLs. So you're probably not going to get that same peak level of performance that you saw at, at his earlier years. But if you can get a couple sacks, a couple TFLs, good run stopping, that is valuable as a fifth-ish defensive lineman on your rotation because depth always matters up front. Also worth mentioning, all of these signings would be cheap. You would not be paying more than probably three million bucks. I think I, I, Matthew Ionatis, Ben Jones, maybe cost somewhere in that range. Maybe it's four with some incentives, whatever. But it's June. You don't, you're not often throwing $10, $15 million, even $7 million bucks at free agents in June. There are some exceptions, maybe in, in, in the event of an injury, but these players would likely be cheap for Atlanta. Again, folks, if there is a signing, we will have you guys covered. Hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash Falcons TV, for more free Falcons videos.